in a networking meeting or a meeting at all, like uh, this one, um, they're going to introduce themselves, starting from Costa. Go. Okay, let's start from Matt then. So hi, I'm Matt Smith, um, and I undertake research and campaigns to promote entrepreneurship in the UK. Hi, I'm, oh, that's loud. Uh, I'm Danny King, I'm the co-founder of Accredible, we're an education technology company. Uh, I've been based in the Bay Area for a couple of years. Uh, hi, I'm Kostov Mavrilakis. Um, I'm an enterprise champion, um, founding team member of uh, NACU, uh, and I'm based in Birmingham in the UK. Okay, great. So, um, to say a little bit more about our speakers, uh, since they did their elevated pitch, Costa um, has focusing a lot on uh, and working with university and industry relations. He has done a lot of work uh, um, in the UK, and he's also advising Cell. Danny has done a lot of work with uh, tech startups and has found various partners and investors and good teams, and he can help you in that. And Matt has done a lot of partnership and a lot of policy lobbying in the UK, including the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister if I'm not mistaken, from those photos on Facebook. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, so you have uh, university industry relations, tech, policy, and all these guys are star networkers. So why don't you start sharing your experiences this time, starting from Costa, tell us what your what is your key specialty and how does networking has helped you and your work so far? Okay, so I'm one of those people that hates, actually hates the word networking. The old style, you know, guys in a suit go to a, uh, an event and they ask for help. They don't care what the person is on the other side. Um, they just, they want help, help, help. Um, so for me, networking, if you want to call it that, is actually helping people. Helping people, it's a relationship at the end of the day. Um, everybody that I come into contact with, I try to make genuine friendships with, and within the first 30 seconds, I think to myself, okay, what does this person need, and who in my network do I know that can help? And I automatically put that forward straight away. It's like, ah, oh, I know so-and-so, and they would really like to, to meet up with you, because I also know the interests of everybody in my network, and the kinds of people and partners they want to connect with, whether it's mentors, they want to connect with, let's say, the corporates that I help, they want to connect with startups because they're running accelerated programs and they're trying to engage startups and they're not in, in those environments. Um, for actual startup founders, it's like we need mentors and we need partners and we need investors. For investors, it's we need access to startups. Um, for universities, um, it's we need um, presence and we need engagement of, um, of students and national partners and so on. Um, and, and there's a lot of overlap there. There's a lot of um, shared uh, interests. So my belief, I, I focus mainly on helping um, young people that are at the beginning of their journey, like literally idea or pre-idea even, um, that are trying to scope out because at that stage, um, they don't know many people. Um, and when they do reach out for help, they get a lot of rejections. It's kind of like, oh, well, why would I put my reputation um, on the line and, 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 and help you, you know, you haven't done nothing. I always try and help those people, the little people, because at some point, we were all that person. We were all that person in, uh, in university that we didn't know um, anybody. And just because um, I'm able to say to somebody, um, oh, I know this guy who is head of this huge corporate organization and he's looking to do mentoring in this particular sector. Um, I could hook you two up and you could have a coffee and maybe he becomes your mentor. Um, that is like gold dust to, to um, a young person because they don't get that access. Um, so my thing is really about networking by helping, um, not asking for anything um, in return, always taking a long-term view. All these people on this panel, I've helped at some point sell, I've helped them um, at, at some point, um, but I've, I don't think I've ever asked um, for help. Um, and I've always tried and made the, the connections um, for them. Um, and always said, you know, later, Danny, when you're successful, etc. cetera, um, I know I'll be supporting your cause like Cell, come to Cyprus. Um, and I know I, I don't even have to like make a pitch to him. He'll just come because he wants to. I've got, I don't need two mics though. I will. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, I'm a, a tech entrepreneur. Um, you, you 
we've raised some money from investors and uh, we've, raised, we've got a little team and I have a co-founder I'm very close with. And those are the three areas um, I'll probably talk a little bit about today because uh, one of the things I'm often asked is how do you find a co-founder? I think it's one of the most important things you can do and the answer is networking. Um, another thing is how do you hire your first 15 people and almost always in a startup, that's from your personal network. Um, so the network you have is so important. And then investors, again, it, it's a networking problem. So it's definitely a common theme. Um, equity and everything, um, Costa said, obviously, um, some general principles is just to be a nice guy and, um, or girl and to generally be helpful, right? Not to have ulterior motives. You can have intentions, like I would like an investor, um, but just generally paying it forward and just being as helpful as you possibly can just because it's nice to do. Um, and then other people will do that for you in return. Maybe not even the same people. That's a general principle to always have in mind. Uh, but those are the three things I can definitely talk about. So my interest is essentially getting more people starting businesses, making it easier for entrepreneurs to run and grow their businesses, and making sure that the public and politicians really understand what it means to be an entrepreneur and what impact entrepreneurs are having in the country, um, both from an economic perspective and a social perspective. Um, so really this is entrepreneurship policy and influencing those in government and elsewhere to make things easier for entrepreneurs. Um, and it requires a slightly different skill set um, and different approach to networking to be able to essentially sell your ideas to those uh, in governments and elsewhere. Um, and why should entrepreneurs care about influencing government? Well, actually there is a lot more simplification needed to, to make things easier to start a business. Uh, you know, if you compare the, the situation of starting a business in Cyprus uh, with the UK, we can register something in 15 minutes for 15 pounds. Uh, and I believe you need a thousand euros and maybe a week or two here to start a business. So there's a lot of um, things that entrepreneurs can simplify through their own experiences. To, to influence um, the government to make, make things simpler. Um, but also entrepreneurs are natural problem solvers. So the, the wider social problems that government and communities at large are facing, actually a lot of these can be solved by entrepreneurs. So there's a real benefit of essentially giving back to your country, to the, to the government and your expertise. Um, and it's simply positioning yourself in a, in a way that you are a trusted um, a source of information for the government and others. Um, and I, I guess the other kind of opportunity is business development through political engagement. You know, this isn't um, corruption or lobbying or anything else, but the, the ability to raise your profile, to position yourself as a thought leader by influencing and sharing your ideas with, with government and others actually provides some opportunities for, for growth of your business as well. So I can talk for a bit of how you identify politicians, how you engage them, how you sell your ideas into them, um, and how you essentially make things simpler for yourself and for entrepreneurs overall. Okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Awesome. I would really like Michael to be part of this because Michael is like the most commercial guy I've ever met, and I've known him for many years. You're and, really boring And No, seriously, um, all these things that we've done, he's also done them as well. Um, but what the one thing that he really excels at is being able to talk to top-level corporates and pitch to them a vision of a startup or a, a non-profit and talk about it in, in their language in order to facilitate um, partnerships. So, Michael, what's your views on? Well, uh, my view, continuing from a takeaway um, based on what you guys said, is that when you network with someone, um, uh, firstly, uh, you go there, you have to pitch yourself, and also you have to grab their interest. So in all three cases, I believe you were mentioning the contribution of the student, the entrepreneur, the policymaker, etc. So when you go there, it, it is a principle not just asking because there's a reason you're going to network. You, most of the times, there's a reason you want to meet someone. So most of the times, you have to offer something back, you know, to grab their interest because if you're, let's say, in a conference where many people are around and you meet a high-profile individual or you manage to arrange a meeting with them, possibilities are either their time will be scarce, they're not going to have enough time to see you, so you have to be quick and tell them what, who you are, what you want, get in, get out, okay, the lights go off. 
And <laughs> the, the second thing is that uh, you have to make an impact. You have to be memorable. Imagine meeting someone who is high profile, right? And that person, that man or woman has met another 300, 300 individuals just like you on the day. What is going to make you stand out? So you have to grasp their interest. And speaking of what you have to bring to the table, I'll actually raise the next topic in this discussion. It, can't, it also comes down to culture, right? And I'll give an example. While I was a student at university, I had the opportunity to meet Reid Hoffman. Reid Hoffman was one of the first investors in Facebook. He's the guy who founded uh, LinkedIn, and he's also a partner in general in uh, Grail of Partners. It's one of the biggest VC firms in the Silicon Valley area. So um, I went up to him and I said, Reid, I'm a student, I have an idea, I'd like to talk to you. The truth is, I had no idea, I just wanted to meet the guy, I just wanted to make contact, I, I wanted to pitch when I actually had the idea in the future. And he just pulled out his card and he's like, get in touch and uh, I'll help you, and if I cannot help you, I'll get someone who can, right? And it happened one year later, actually. He directed us to Adam Nash, and we went to San Francisco and pitched finance to Adam Nash. So, um, uh, and that's that's the culture in Silicon Valley and other entrepreneurial regions, right? Uh, people are willing to help because if they meet you and you succeed and they do something in you, they know they can succeed with you. And there's a culture of helping out without asking anything in return, actually. Now, you gentlemen have been uh, in Silicon Valley, you have been in Europe, right? I want you to give us your views on this area and uh, how is an entrepreneur, a policymaker, a student dealt with in both sides of the Atlantic? And uh, what is your input on that, starting from Costa? So, culture is very in, in, important. You know, what, what Michael said is it's really about the mentality. Um, I always try and take um, what these guys know is a, a why not mentality. You know, what have I got to lose by giving you know two minutes of my time um, and connecting somebody up, um, somebody, somebody to somebody else that they didn't have that connection but they would really value. Um, and I found that as I travelled around and I've lived in places like uh, Cambridge, uh, Birmingham, I've travelled around to Cyprus or uh, through Europe, that you both find that shared mentality within these ecosystems to help because people get it. Um, people get why they come to these um, events. Yes, it's to learn. Yes, it's to be educated and to be inspired. Um, but it's also for um, to make um, connections for something that they're working on um, now or in future, whether they ask now or whether they um, ask in future. Um, it's when you go into the... Uh, how do I say it? Um, the non, the clear, you know, local business environment. You know, we set local council sets up a meeting with business leaders in um, at eight a.m. in the morning, and you purely go there for networking. I try never, as a as an enterprise champion, I never try to um, run networking events. I always try to run conferences or accelerators or business plan competitions where networking is an element um, uh, of it um, because I don't like the whole networking for the sake of networking. Um, and, and so culturally it depends, I don't think it's by country, um, but it's kind of like by segment of mentality um, of that audience. And if that um, audience, I think all the people in this room are here because um, they want to learn something from um, other people, whether they're networking with them, um, or people on stage, for example, that have done something that they aspire to do. Um, but at the same time, I think everybody wants to um, help out in some way. And I encourage you all to, to, um, to help, to kind of sit there, uh, stand up later, and just talk to anybody and say, I know this guy, what are you trying to do? Maybe I, I can connect you, maybe I can write an email. I always give my, my business card and say, and my business card has my personal number on, and I say, text me at any time of the day, um, but just know that you know I sleep from 12 till 6 uh, in the morning, So um, and I'll get back to you and I'll, I'll help you. But I always give them an expectation that 
I am very busy right now. Um, so you chase me on a for, on a medium like on WhatsApp. You'll get me then email. Um, so I kind of give them that expectation that I will get back to them. Um, but this is how I like to um, communicate, and maybe we should set up a call um, and and do that. And I always try and do a call with uh, with somebody, or if I'm in the area, um, to meet up with them. So I guess my sum my summary point is, it's not um, it's by mentality of the segment of that um, audience, not by the country um, that uh, defines whether somebody um, wants to help and um, connect people. Um, so, Silicon Valley versus Europe. Um, so for, you shouldn't generalize, and, and, and I don't want to, um, but what instead I'll talk about is what are the traits that you usually see in Silicon Valley that I think are amazing in the networking world, in the startup world? Um, and, it, and Silicon Valley isn't a place, it's a mindset. And the, the biggest thing that you see is this pay it forward mentality. And what that means is that um, people find you, they actively come and find you and help you um, because somebody did it to them. And there's something that I really admire um, whenever I see it, which is every entrepreneur, um, Many entrepreneurs uh, that I know are, are part of a chain, and somebody one step ahead of them. Like maybe maybe they've raised a seed round, and there's somebody who's raised a series A who is helping them. But that series A guy found or girl found the seed person, and like actively said, "I want to help you." And the, the person raising this the seed is maybe helping out a pre-entrepreneur. And there's this chain of uh, somebody paying it forward because somebody did it to them. Um, you, you shouldn't. You shouldn't wait to be asked for help. You should always be thinking about, like, how can I help you? How can I help you and be genuinely helpful? And really put some serious time into that. Um, and I think that, that is something that um, could be better in, in certain parts of the world. But I don't think it's geographically, it's a mindset. And uh, another thing is that um, think about the people you really admire in your networks. Um, I think the reason you admire them isn't because they're prestigious or their achievements, it's probably because they built up social capital with you already, right? They have invested time and mental energy into problems that you care about and they've tried to help you with it. Um, so focus less on you know, trying to impress and, and, and building up prestige and focus more on actually helping people and investing in building social capital with people um, because that's, why, that's what people will like. Uh, and that's what people remember. And I think that's a, another very sort of Silicon Valley mindset. So I think the attitude to networking has changed quite a lot in the UK in the past few years, particularly London. Uh, I think, as Costa said, that traditional image of the uh, kind of stuffy room full of suits, um, kind of forcing cards on one another, um, and then forgetting or never even thinking of following up with anyone, has kind of developed more towards the Silicon Valley mindset. Not quite there yet, but. Networking is far more now an exchange of ideas. You know, I, I'm not going with uh, looking down the guest list, trying to find exactly who I want to talk to and scanning the room to find them and Twitter stalking them so I know exactly what they look like. I'm walking into a room, having a chat, and actually it comes back to problem solving. So you talk about what you're doing and you get amazing ideas off the back of those conversations with people. Um, and then you follow up where need is. Um, I think the other, I think, important point um, is investing time in networking. So, in not making it a competition to see how many cards you can collect in the course of a, a day in a room, but really spending the time, at least 10, 15, 20 minutes with a single individual to really understand them, to really connect with them, um, so that you can follow up and actually achieve a lot more. You know, far better to have one in-depth half-hour conversation with someone, a uh, single person, rather than have 10 business cards that you barely remember talking to. Um, because they're the ones that will introduce you to more people, they're the ones that uh, will continue to be uh, uh, supportive for you. Okay, actually, um, good point uh, from all of you. I'm just going to pick up again on what Matt said. Um, let's say you're starting up a startup or an organization, or you have an idea that you want to test with people. And uh, certainly you might have some people in your network that you can use as contacts, right? Um, and they can help you out themselves or introduce you to someone else who's close to their network. That might be, let's say, as we call it, three degrees away. 
However, um, uh, in some occasions, and, uh, and you gentlemen uh, probably heard of it, uh, we say that networking should be shameless, meaning it's okay to be shameless, even if you don't know the person and you think they could be a good contact, you should go knock on their door and get them on board and get their interest, even if it looks like the more far-fetched scenario ever. So I want you to comment on this and also give us one example where you have been a shameless networker, starting from Costa. Um, when I was a shameless networker. How, how did you meet the Prime Minister? How did that happen? <laughs> right to the top. Um, actually just at an event, a launch of a Startup Britain campaign, and caught him for three minutes, had a nice chat about um, the intentions of Startup Britain and, and uh, I guess, his vision for... Um, for entrepreneurial growth in the coming few years. Um, it's, it's always challenging, you know, the, the dream target of, you know, who do you, the most important person in the room that you want to meet, um, you know, what do you say to them? Um, you know, the Prime Minister, what do you say to the President? What do you say to Bill Gates if he walked through the door right now? And it's, it's, really, it's a really hard one. Um, so I think you need to keep it quite open, quite, quite, um, quite generic. I, I actually forget what I spoke, what I said to the Prime Minister. I've completely forgotten. Um, I'm trying to think of other... Come back to me. Entrepreneurs ask, um, and you should be shameless about that. Um, so the reason why you should be shameless about that is because you've been paying it forward and helping people, right? And um, you don't have, it doesn't have to be tit for tat. It just has to be on average socially. You know, if you're a good guy or um, a good person and you've been helping people, out, you should be completely shameless about going up to whoever it is in the room and looking them in the eye and saying, I've got this idea or this problem or this opportunity. Is there any way you could help me? Um, and they'll like that usually. Um, and you should have no qualms about that. And in your head as well, you should always, always be thinking about who do I know that could connect somebody um, to solve somebody else's problem? You know, so at conferences, especially people say, well, I have this issue, and in your head, you've met this guy like three conferences ago, and you can connect them, and you can say, you should email them and be shameless and ask this. Um, entrepreneurs ask. Okay, uh, what is your um, well, okay, uh, my first investor, um, Pat. Um, so Mitch Capor, who founded uh, Lotus Corporation. Um, Lotus Notes, and uh, the first spreadsheet ever, Lotus 123. Um, back in the 80s, he was a, a sort of, uh, still is obviously a powerhouse in technology. Um, uh, investing, but back then he was a powerhouse of technology. Um, and, you know, this guy was, was a bit of an idol for me, I believe, Silicon Valley, and I just went up to him and I said, um, I was lucky because I was in uh, an accelerator, so it made it slightly easier, but I just went up to him and I said, we have this idea, and I'd love to uh, talk it through with you. Do you have 10 minutes? And he did. And he invested. Um, and the, the example of entrepreneurs asked is I looked at him in the eye and I said, um, so, what do you think? Is this the kind of thing you could invest in? Um, burn that phrase into your mind, by the way, when you're fundraising. What do you think? Is this the kind of thing you could invest in? Um, and, you know, a lot, I think a lot of people, when they're pitching or, or talking, they're, they're, sh they're scared. They'll, they'll talk and they'll build a connection, but they're scared to make the ask, which is like, can you help me achieve X? Will you do X? And it's a scary thing to do, but just say it. Um, is this the kind of thing you'd be interested in investing in? So I kind of resonate a bit with Danny. You know, entrepreneurs ask, but you know, you don't ask, you don't get, is the, you know, the old saying. Um, and shameless networking, um, that's, uh, that's something I haven't, haven't thought about because I, I always help everybody no matter what. Um, I guess I was probably more shameless when I was um, young, young, I mean, I'm still young, but I, think, I hope. Um, but I guess when I was in um, Warwick University, I was president of the Entrepreneur Society, uh, my network was local, it wasn't regional, national, international, etc. as it is now. Um, and what, what we needed as a, n let's say, non-profit social uh, movement was we needed sponsors, um, which is, is common for most um, social movements. Um, and it's with things like that that you, you do have to be shameless because if you don't have connections into corporates at, at that age, um, you kind of need to be visible. So. Uh, be visible where they are and go to where they are 
So I was going to all the career events, um, not for the sake of um, networking like all my, my peers, you know, for getting a job, etc., but um, networking with the aim of getting um, one of these corporates um, as a sponsor to our society for, um, you know, a few thousand pounds. Um, and I, I made sure that in the space of, um, I was trying to scope up this one company um, because back then, you know, I just thought they're cool uh, as a corporate. Um, I liked what they did um, and the company's Accenture. And um, I, I saw that they were sponsoring our biggest um, competitor on campus who were like 10 times bigger than us. Uh, and I actually went to this, this society and I said to them, oh, wouldn't it be great if we worked together? We were like 100, 200 people. It was like very early days. With, whereas now there are about 1,000 people. And uh, this was about eight, nine years ago. And those people said, um, well, why would we help you? You know, we're, we've got this huge mailing list. We're all this. Um, and and my, um, the, the founder, I was the president of the society, but the founder said, um, oh, we'll try again next year. I said, no, no. We will we'll get them back for that because um, they're looking at us as um, we are nothing. We're just... We're, we're just this, we're not going to tie our reputation to you on a partnership, etc. I pr probably shouldn't say this, I'm on record. Um, and uh, so I made sure that I went round to all these um, career events, um, locally, regionally, nationally, um, learning about Accenture, talking to, talking to the staff, uh, pretending that I was interested um, in a job, um, and, um, and finding out what their main challenges are of uh, recruiting um, of recruiting uh, people in universities. And I found um, things out like, um, it was about engaging postgraduates or international students or, or whatever. Um, and I, um, I also did approach them uh, indirectly um, through, a, through a contact, having picked up loads of cards and, and had this social conversation with them all. Um, and they said, well, we're sponsoring XYZ um, Society on campus. We've been doing it for a few years. Um, the relationship's good, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, I bet you um, that with our thing, uh, we've got young people who are uh, innovators who um, they will spot an opportunity for you and your clients. They will take risks because they're audacious and young, and et cetera. I really like, pitched to them. It wasn't like, oh, you're going to come and talk in front of them about writing a CV workshop. Um, and I also did some background uh, around that. So I took a long-term view like I always take. It's not just going to, to these events and meeting people. Um, I went and found um, reports in the Career Center about um, uh, what Accenture, how they recruit um, at Warwick, um, what their challenges are, et cetera. And then, having spoke to all these people, their employees, um, over a period of time, I went in and I said, okay, I want you to sponsor our society. Um, and, you know, we don't need any um, money up front. We just need, like, the association. And we will get you um, regional press coverage um, in one of our events. Um, and that year, um, you have to be confident in what you're about to say. I mean, somebody said to me, um, I think it was Stephen from Laval SEA, he was saying to me just off record that um, with investors, um, you have to be absolutely confident that you can deliver um, because it's a pressure and it's the same here. You have to be confident you can deliver. So I just went in and said, we, we're gonna get you local press coverage um, within the area, which means more and more students. We're going to, but I wasn't aiming for local, I was aiming for national. Um, and I actually went and got another um, corporate as a, uh, as, a, as a big sponsor. Um, and we went and got national press coverage um, for Be Your Own Boss competition uh, in the Independent. And we mentioned Accenture. And the next year, Accenture um, uh, sponsored us um, as the main society on campus, not the one that they've been sponsoring all along. So that's probably my, my one sh shameless um, experience. But you know, when you're in those environments and you don't know um, many people in your developing, you have to be um, audacious. Two shameless things. Uh, now I've had time to think. Um, I executed a targeted uh, networking campaign purely to get what was my dream job uh, at the time. So I invited employees of the target organization to speak at my enterprise society. I went to dinners that they were speaking at nearby. I even got on a 5 a.m. train down to London to one of their events purely to work the room to meet every single one of their employees to win them over, and it succeeded, I got the job. Um, the other slightly strange request um, that I put to a special advisor to David Cameron, I attempted to drive a fleet of Maseratis into Downing Street, and it failed. Sadly. 
Well, you tried, so that counts. <laughs> okay, um, uh, so I guess the key takeaways from here is that not only <laughs> shameless, um, you should always have a call to action, right? And it's okay to try and it's okay to fail because if you don't ask, the answer is always no. Um, we have about 10 to 15 minutes before we open up the floor for questions. And, uh, and, I, and I remember uh, a good example of shameless networking from a, a friend of ours, Jack Smith. He was actually presenting here yesterday. Jack raised uh, 25 million with one of his startups, Van Gold, and around 12 million with his other startup, uh, which is Ship, and million of dollars, not pounds. So um, what Jack did uh, when he was starting his startup in London with his co-founder Zane, um, uh, they really wanted to get into this accelerator program called the Angel Pack in Silicon Valley. It was based in San Francisco, now I think it's in New York. And uh, they knew it would be really hard for them to get in because uh, I think the, the positions were running out and uh, they didn't have much time. So what these guys did was Jack actually video recorded Zane pitching to the founder of Angel Pack. They took that video, they put it on a website, and then they ran a sponsor advertisement on Facebook, targeting people who could knew, who could know um, the founder of Angel Pack in Silicon Valley. And the advertisement was, uh, it said, do you know this person? And it actually had a photograph of the founder of Angel Pack. And uh, the founder was, uh, was on, on a trip, and as soon as he landed, he got like 20, 25 emails of people asking him, hey, do you know these kids? They're trying to reach you, it's all over Facebook, and uh, there's this video of them telling you why you should get them on board. So that, that chain was networking, and that's how they hustled their way into Silicon Valley. And uh, actually, when the guy saw the, all those emails, he called Zane and Jack up, and he said, um, one, get the, get that advertisement the hell off Facebook because you're spamming me. And the second thing is, uh, can you move to San Francisco in three days? And they actually made it. They went to Angel Pad and now they're doing extremely well at a very good valuation. Now, since we have like uh, around 10 minutes left, um, let's come to the last part of our discussion. Um, uh, networking, since you're connecting to someone, does not only have to do with the way you approach them and the words you tell them, it's also about the visuals, the body language, what you present, etc. And I'm, I remember that explicitly because uh, we were at the Nike conference in London and Costa showed up, and that's how uh, everyone remembers him. And he gave us business cards, and his business cards uh, in the back of them said, why not? So- uh, question, question mark, exclamation mark. Yeah. So um, uh, people at, in the conference started calling him the why not guy, and he suddenly became memorable. And actually many of us remember him that way. And it's been like three, four years since that conference. So I want you gentlemen to comment on this, starting from Matt this time. Because you um, well, obviously you need to be memorable. I think that the basics of looking sharp and uh, appearing confident, the handshake, etc., cetera, are the, the basics of uh, making a good impression. I think being a bit quirky, having the why not card, is always quite useful, you know, particularly if it's a long event, people wander home slightly drunk with a pocket full of business cards and looking through them the next day, you know, what what's, uh, helps them remember you explicitly? So I think something, Something that is slightly different. Hopefully, Costa has got a whole set of why not cards in his bag. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, you didn't hear me. You know, this is just like off Moo.com. It's a square business card. It's you know, you guys know it. Um, but in universities, everybody's using the corporate old style old um, business card, and, and uh, I want people to remember me. It's, and just handing just handing that over, um, they're already questioning that. I mean, I also like get uh, the business card's very important to me. Um, the last company I, I, I worked for, they used uh, the Luke's cards that, that Moo.com do, and um, people when you gave it to them, they were like, 
you give me two here, and you're like, no, no, that's just how high quality they are. They are their representation of us, um, and that it leads it leads leaves a lasting um, um, kind of image um, on that, and you haven't even done anything at that point. That is just the quality of what you're giving, but it's what is on the card as well. Um, so in that case, I was at a conference where you know I'm trying to get people to um, change things, to meet people, to to further themselves, um, because it is what it is. Why not? Why, why wouldn't you? Why, what else would you be doing? Um, why don't you give that amount of, of time? Why can't we change the world? Why can't we do NACU as twelve, um, you know, semi-connected, locally connected people um, that go and raise four point eight million uh, euro from government? Why can't we do that? Um, why can't you be audacious? Why can't you go up to the prime minister um, and meet him? You know. Why not? Um, so it's what's, what's on the card is what's important. So I always make sure I don't have two phones. I have a personal phone number. And like I said earlier, I always say to people, you can contact me on that. Don't call me. Text me, WhatsApp me, add me on Facebook, etc. cetera. Um, if I haven't met somebody, I, um, I prefer them to add me on LinkedIn um, because I like to build a, a personal um, relationship and try and be um, friends with that person. Um, and I, I try and, um, my, my approach has, has changed um, over the years because it's gone from um, how can I, who do I know that can help you and then recommending it to um, what are the three challenges you're facing right now? I've moved from being uh, an, a, a networker slash enterprise champion towards being an advisor and a mentor into accelerators, um, into uh, business plan competitions nationally, internationally. Um, and, uh, and doing that mentoring element, and it's always very much like, so what are the three challenges you're having right now as a, as a startup, or as a, as a founder, or somebody that wants to do something, even if it's you know, none of those things? Um, and who are the types of people that I can connect you with that can help you address those challenges? So that means that automatically I'm thinking, um, how can I help that person? And at the same time, I'm listening to them, of them, so we're, I'm joining the dots and they're joining the dots um, in order to get a higher quality of output of connection um, for them. And then what I do is I go away and I say, you know, either you chase me or um, I'll chase you. I try and do both. Um, but if I'm super busy, I'll, I'll be honest with that. Um, and I, I follow up and I try and evangelize on, on both sides of why these two people um, should connect. Um, so um, I will give you, you know, an example. Um, Sal came to me and said, you know, we're running this conference and uh, we want to get some great speakers, um, people that are uh, tech entrepreneurs that um, have raised, have sold, are, have got disruptive businesses, um, uh, etc. Um, and they were doing really well um, already with speakers, but we want to bring some people that, you know, some young people that you can relate to and they've done amazing things. Um, and I basically gave them... Um, they gave me lots of specific criteria. I always ask for criteria. Tell me the types of people you want to connect with. What industry? What have they done? Male or female? Are they based in the UK? Are they based abroad? Um, what kind of partnerships have they done, um, etc.? Um, that you know, so that you kind of nail down to what you need. You know, rather than giving, making a generic um, connection off, with, rather than generalizing, because it's all about making sure they get something um, out of that. Um, connection, but also feeling that you are going to make that. It's not just, oh, I connect you with and you don't do it. Um, you actually uh, do it and fulfill. Um, so with, with Sal, it was like I put forward, you know, five, um, four uh, people that I thought these would be fantastic for, um, for you. Um, and they went for all four of them. And actually, Angelos wanted um, Stephen um, from Label because he's a big foodie. Um, and he was like, wow, if you can get him, I'd be really live it. Re really love it, and and uh, Mike Hadrano really wanted um, Danny because um, we'd met up in London already, um, and Danny was really to him. It was like he wants to help beyond um, just you know seeing if Sal can partner with a credible blah blah blah. He was he went away from that chat um, really well, and Struthos wanted to meet Matt, um, and the same with and actually I threw Gaston um, the, who's going to talk later, and actually you won't get it from the title, but Gaston basically raised um, half a million and made a few million, and then um, was CEO for four years and got kicked out of um, his own company. He's like 27. Um, and he's got this amazing uh, um, story. And it's I, I thought it was really important. It wasn't a natural 
connecting of the dots that Cell made, but it was a, a connection of the dots that I made to say, you know, you guys um, hear the whole, you start, you've got an idea, um, we're gonna build the product, get traction, then we're gonna go and raise some investment. What are the horror stories? That is a horror story, and he's gonna tell you exactly how he dealt with it. And I'm sure Danny's got um, horror stories as well um, that, that help him you know, cope with that kind of thing. Um, so with Sally, it was like I put those guys forward, and I think within like four hours, um, all of them said yes. It was just like a text. I didn't. Gaston even said to um, to them. You um, know, let's hold on to that though. Uh, yeah, sorry, let's sorry, let sorry, Gaston talk about it later. We don't yeah. want to do a spoiler alert. So, so since we have only five minutes left, let's hear it from Danny. Let's go back to the how you present yourself or what kind of visuals do you use to network to uh, someone and be memorable. We have uh, around five minutes, so um, give us the last comments. Yeah. Honestly, I, I honestly don't know. I don't really think too much about it. Um, okay. Just be, be yourself, um, and how can I help, right? Um, so instead of answering that, I'm gonna give a really quick anecdote, actually. Um, back to entrepreneurs ask, and, and back to um, being shameless, because that, I think is a really important point from this entire talk is um, it's those moments where you go and ask shamelessly that are going to change your life. Whether it's will you marry me or whether it's will you invest in my company or whatever it is, shamelessly asking is going to change your life. And this is one anecdote I'd like to share. Um, we, I started my company with Alan, my best friend. We were like fresh out of uni. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. Um, and we got into uh, an accelerator in Silicon Valley called Imagine K12, and that changed our lives. Like that took us to Silicon Valley and it completely changed our lives. And I want to tell you about how um, shamelessly asking, even when you really think you shouldn't be, um, you should never give up on that. Um, so we had a Skype interview because it's based in um, Silicon Valley, right? And we were in the UK. And so we had our Skype interview and it went the worst it could have gone. It literally ended in one of the partners um, d doing this. <sighs> Guys, do you have any other ideas? Right, this is literally what he says. We were like, wow, wow. Um, and we pitched two ideas and we thought they were pretty good. So, you know, we, we should have given up at that point. Um, that guy, we realized, was uh, talking at Silicon Valley comes to Cambridge uh, next week. So we went down to Cambridge, and I think, were you there? I think, um, um, I think that was when Reid Hoffman was there, too, um, possibly. So um, J Jeff Rolston, um, who, who is now an investor in Incredible, he, he was there, and, and then, like, you know, he, he, the last thing he said was, like, seriously, guys, is that all you've got, pretty much? Um, so I went up to him, and I said, hey, we, we screwed that interview up. Can I take you? Uh, aside for 15 minutes and have the interview again. Can we have that again? And he said yes, and he sat us down, and he interviewed us. And uh, I didn't think that went particularly well either, but it must have gone better than we thought. They must have liked something in us, me and my founder, Alan, co-founder, Alan, because we then got into Imagine K12. And going from a no, like a pretty clear no, to changing my entire life, starting me on this entrepreneurial journey, was because I asked shamelessly in a way that I perhaps shouldn't have. Um, so hopefully that, that, that you know, the message I'm trying to say is that really, like, shamelessly asking doesn't mean, like, accept no. <laughs> you know, like, really keep going, and, and if you really believe you can do something, um, go and do it, and keep asking until you get it. Okay, great. Matt, do you have any last comments before we open the floor to questions? I think that's pretty good. Finish, finish I'll, I'll leave you with a, a quote that I always live yep. by, which is, it's not what you know, and it's not even who you know. It's who knows you. It's how visible you are. It's where you're at, what presence you're at, what events you're at. Um, what your LinkedIn profile looks like, what your business card looks like, um, how you connect with somebody, that personal brand on when you connect with somebody. It's who knows you. And if you are like that, and it is who knows you, opportunities come to you. And that's how I do it, um, as well as doing all the other things that I've said, connecting the dots and so on. Um, because I want to attract opportunities to me to help people like Sell. Great, thank you. So, um, do we have any volunteers? Okay, so now we're gonna open the floor to questions. We have around 15 minutes for that. Um, who has a question first? No questions, no comments? Okay, I got worried there for a minute. Uh, can you raise your hands again, please? Okay, the lady in the blue first, the gentleman, then. Morning, guys, uh, my name is Joanne. Uh, I'm not an entrepreneur, I do have a job, but it's something I dream of doing. So I do not have a network, so basically my question is, where do I start? That's, that's a great question. So um, it, first of all, there's general networking, and then you've got specific networking, right? So generally, you should just start meeting as many people as you possibly can and do the kind of stuff that Costa especially was saying, which is be helpful. Be known for being helpful, especially in maybe a certain niche. 
get out there to every event you can and talk to as many people as you can, shamelessly, um, but in a helpful way. And then specific networking, there are a few things you need to do. First of all, I think you should try and find a co-founder. You shouldn't start up alone, uh, in my personal opinion, unless you absolutely have to. Other people would disagree with that. So if you want to find a co-founder, go to, well, you know, maybe you're interested in certain areas. Uh, a co-founder is like finding a husband or a wife. And it's, what I mean by that is it's like wicked hard, and it takes a ton of work, and it's rare. And so you need to find places where people hang out um, which have similar interests in you, which are likely to get on with you, um, in, in, and be able to build a really trusting, solid relationship. So maybe you're interested in the arts. Um, go to art meetups. Go to you know, uh, bars where you know people hang out that talk about the arts and like, start talking to people. Um, so do general networking. And then if you have a specific intention, work out where the people that hang out are. Um, so in, in Matt's case, political circles, or in Costa's case, it's university and sort of startup circles generally. Um, and go there and just try and you know, shamelessly ask, would you like to be my co-founder? Or like, you know. I will add to that. Um, if you're um, a tech, a tech guy, and you're, or you're a CEO of, um, you've got an idea, and you need a tech co-founder, people always ask, where do you get them from, etc. I mean, developers are, um, developers are ten a penny, but getting the right developer with the right mentality, the long-term view, not the freelance view of, you know, for every day that I take out of this, I'm not going to get paid, etc. The, the view that they get what you're trying to do, and not they just want to build it for the sake of building it, but they actually want to build it, that people will use it and find it useful, and so on. And people ask me this question all the time, and I think the best place to do it is to go to hackathons, because it's not just finding somebody with the technical skills, it's finding if you get on with them, A, in a you know, meeting, and B, if you think you can work with them. So a hackathon's a great example of that, because you've got a hack on an idea, and you've got to develop an app in like two days, um, that you go to that, that, uh, that hackathon with, and by the end of those two days, you can pretty much figure out and say, do I work well with that person? And um, yeah, I do, actually. I would really, I really just, they just got me. They're just exactly like me, et cetera. That, it's, it's like a marriage, like, like Danny said. So yeah, that's why. <coughs> Firstly, you're in the right place, obviously. Um, so more of these events, more conferences, more communities like this. I think at the early stage before you start, you can be a bit cheekier about the requests you're asking. You know, you, you, I don't think, yes, pay it forward, but when you're really pre-start, you can be pretty shameless in requesting support from everyone. You, know, you need the introductions, and once you're established, once you've got a business up and running, you'll send the lift down to the next people. But right now, just ask away and get as many introductions, connections as possible. Hello. Oh. Um, good morning. I'm Yannis. I'm an entrepreneur and investor as well. Uh, I, just, um, I totally agree what you say, and it's valuable knowledge to know and to practice as well. There is also a specific period of pitching someone, uh, so um, it's better not to be long, to make the impressions, as you say, to be different as well. With a why not? It's a very good idea as well. But also, there's a specific um, period. I mean, time frame. You have to pitch it. Either you, for example, uh, there's, they say that there's 29 seconds. You not to, either you make an impression, either you be a hero or a zero. So do you agree? Would you like to comment on that? It's, it's better, it's more like a statement rather than a question, sorry. I, I, I think very briefly, um, yes, you don't want to go on too long. And yes, you don't want to tell your entire life story in your initial pitch. You, know, you want to leave the individual you're meeting with a question. You want to create a hook that will uh, make them interested in you. And actually, they should be the ones that are following with questions to really learn more about what you're doing, what challenges you're facing, uh, how you can help them. So don't tell the full story. Uh, keep it short and uh, create a hook. Yeah, I mean, um, just ask. Well, you know, find out what they do, and uh, usually in advance you usually know anyway. And if you see there's an area for synergy, immediately point that out. You know, I think we could work together in this way. Um, or more likely, if you see an area where you can help them, I think I could help you in this way. Um, within 29 seconds, awesome rule of thumb. Hi, guys. Um, I've been living in Asia for nine years. I've done the US, I've done Europe. Um, Silicon Valley is a very, very different kettle of fish, as you probably all gather when it comes to networking, it is about helping. I think I, 
I uh, pretty much sit in Costa's camp where I help everyone. Um, sometimes uh, detrimental where, because, you know, if, 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 you know, get kicked back. But in Asia, it's um, a tough world. Um, when you go to networking events, it's not about trying to help. It's people just trying to concern that you're, you're going to be competing, you're going to nick their ideas. So I always stand out, you know, in the crowd because I'm this guy who turns up with jeans and a T-shirt, um, trying to help everyone, and everyone's thinking, why? So, you know, how do you tackle something like that? The other thing with the U.S., um, in the Silicon Valley, it's great that everyone helps, but then when the company becomes more corporate, it becomes a very challenging competitive world. Everyone becomes protective, um, and everyone wants to wonder why you want to compete, and they don't share ideas. So it's a real, you know, you, you start helping, and then once you get to a certain point, it doesn't help anymore. So just yeah. open it out to the forum. Um, I'll jump in on this, this one. Um, I, I, I care deeply about this subject. Just share. Just share, like, all your information. If you're really competing on secrecy, you're not going to win. There's going to be somebody else better in the world than you because there are 7 billion people in the world doing this. If you're really competing on the fact that nobody else knows about your secret source, no way. You should be competing on the fact that you're the best people in the world to do that idea. You're best placed. Uh, you are the best at that particular skill. Whatever it is, maybe you've got tons of traction. Um, so share the hell out of your ideas and find the people that make you into the best team in the world. Um, that's how you really compete. Let me just let me just add to that. Um, you do get that subsection of people that are like, well, "Why are you, why are you like this? Why are you?" Um, I, I'm completely getting with what you say. You do come across the stereotypical. What's the catch? And I say to them, "There's no catch. Um, I am an enterprise champion and a, a connector, and I like to understand what you guys do. Um, and I know a bunch of people that would love to connect with you. I personally have no interest um, to connect with something for my um, interests." Um, what I do is I help people start businesses or advise them or nonprofits or whatever. Um, so there's no catch. Um, but making that, making that clear and kind of sharing the story of what would happen next um, to them kind of goes, okay, so, you know, because people are conscious of, um, um, of that. So showing, you know, giving them an example straight away of how you would join, join a dot and give them a straight example and say, yeah, I would X, Y, Z, da, 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 and they would get it then. And yeah, I've never had a comeback on that. But it's only it's only happened like one in ten, but it usually happens in corporate circles where people are more skeptical sometimes. And just avoid people who are skeptical. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think it is a challenge. You see it particularly at university level or with young people that. Um, are scared about sharing their ideas. You know, they don't want to share their idea because someone thinks they'll steal it. Um, you know, they think oversharing at networking is is entirely a bad thing. And you know, you can win them round. Um, particularly when younger, I think the wider challenge of trying to turn around a whole nation, uh, kind of culture of a continent, or kind of wider area is a bit more challenging. Um, but I think as we see from <coughs> from Europe, from US, et cetera, this is the way it's going. And uh, to build effective high growth startups, you need to be sharing those ideas. So I guess keep at it, um, ruffle some feathers, annoy some people, um, and uh, hopefully more will join you. And Joanna, was it Joanna? Um, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is, you know, when you're just getting started, it's really important to have a thing that you're really passionate about, because that makes networking really easy. It's quite scary to go and talk to people. Obviously, I, I still find it really scary. Um, but um, if you have something you're passionate about and you can go up to somebody and start talking about that, it makes it a lot easier. So whether it's a project or a thing, like I'm sure you have many of these things. And talk about that. Become that thing. Because people will remember the, the passion and not so much the person, I think. I, I just have uh, one thing. One thing I said to the guys over lunch, uh, over dinner last night was, you know, this conference is amazing, excellent, etc. cetera. Um, but the one thing that um, you could do tomorrow is you could allocate one person on your team um, to go and speak to everybody. And because you know everybody already, it's like, oh, you should really be connecting. You should really be talking to so-and-so. I did it with Danny yesterday. I was talking to a guy that's going to do an e-learning course for robotics. And I know Danny does digital certificates with Incredible. And I literally just dragged him across to Danny and said, you, got, you two have got to talk. Um, and I used to do that in NACU conferences. Um, and so I'm going to do that today, because um, this, this is my last talk today. So, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to take a photo of you all. Um, I've got a mental picture of everybody that's here, but I'm going to take a photo, and I'm going to come and find you, and we're going to sit down, and I'm going to help you in some way 
and connect you with somebody. Mihaly, can I? Um, uh, so for any, sale. Any last questions? Can I, yeah. can I go ahead with the last question? Yeah. Uh, following up from the previous uh, speaker. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations uh, regarding the, the profile of the candidate partners that you should uh, talk to? For example, are there any categories that you should exclude? Um, and let me state an example. Uh, would uh, a CEO of, of a large, well-established uh, company will be willing to speak to an unknown entrepreneur who's uh, sleeping under his uh, office and uh, eating uh, bagels or <laughs> for, uh, for, uh, for meal? It, eating che cheap lunch, I mean. <laughs> yeah. um, may I start with this? I believe, uh, yes, it really depends not only on the CEO, but uh, the person behind the title. So I gave the example before of Reid Hoffman. Reid Hoffman is now worth 3.2 or $4 billion. So that guy was willing to come and talk to students and actually help them and give his time to them because he was an entrepreneur himself. He's been there. So, uh, and I believe in entrepreneurship, it's always about giving back. So there are some people who will help back, you know, there are some people who won't. It really depends on the person, on the experiences, etc. But as we said before, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So you should definitely ask. Possibly it depends on the type of corporation, with, whether it is introverted or extroverted. Perhaps uh, if the CEO and the corporation share a certain culture, let's say. Um, um, so one thing I want to add is um, don't just connect for the sake of um, connecting. Try and like build um, a, a pre-relationship to the relationship that you hope will get started and try and um, evangelize um, to, the, to those people. So I brought, I brought four speakers to this conference that I knew would be beneficial to the audience um, uh, that I know that Cell directly wants, um, but also speakers that they didn't, um, it, it didn't, they didn't join the dots um, immediately, um, like Gaston. Um, and then when they've met him, they're like, this is going to be an amazing talk, um, because it's a horror story that you don't hear. Um, but I also made sure that those people that I was bringing um, also get some value out of it. Um, and I know that um, I actually connected a credible with Cell about six months ago when I started advising Cell um, in the hope um, that that Cell would work with the Cell would want to work with them and a credible would want to work with them. And they actually met over coffee in London and they really got on. Danny wanted to help. Um, and I'm I'm happy that out of that um, that a credible are working with Cell. Equally, um, I know that, um, that Gaston, um, I know what he is looking for, and I've brought a partner to this conference, a potential partner to this conference, and they just hit it off like a house on fire. Um, and so I always try and um, connect the dots in a number of um, ways. Although I'm help helping Sal, I'm also making sure I help that person on that side, and I evangelize. And when they don't, they, when they don't see the connection straight away, I do it for them and show them. And they're, then they're like, oh my God, Costa, I didn't even think about that. You know my business as well as I do, um, but I, I'm so focused on the detail. You're seeing the high level. Um, so evangelize um, and, and try and build the, the pre-relationship um, for them. Um, so it's not so tense and awkward and, and, and so on. Um, so finally, um, I've taken a photo of you all now. Um, and uh, I'm just going to take one last one. And I will, say, I will say to you all, come and find me. Let's chat. And um, I want to help. Uh, I really want to help and um, help you in some way. Just tell me your three challenges and the types of people you want to connect with. Uh, and if I, I can help, I will. And if I can't help and I know somebody that can, I will introduce you to that person. My email address is danny at a credible .com. Oh, yeah, I should say that. OK. Um, well, uh, everyone can network with you, the gentleman will be available outside. So uh, the takeaways, a good networker on steroids, <laughs> I said, is someone who is open, who can bring things to the table, who can connect the dots, who sees the value added, and who is not, wants to help, wants to help and is not afraid to ask. So let's have a round of applause for the gentleman. Thank you very much.
Costa has your picture and you're all filed. Uh, any copyright or whatever infringement, uh, Cell is not responsible. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can meet them over the coffee break. Thank you very much.